recording. Right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is our second day of PMP exam prep and yesterday we were talking about the requirements of PMP exam examination. We have gone through a lot many details from the PMP handbook. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you for your online. We just started for the first time and we knew you will be joining us. So now we have just started. So we started off with the CCR program. <clears throat> As you know, yesterday we talked about the whole process of how to apply for PMP exam and how to, you know, go and sit in the exam, what are the requirements uh, in the exam center before uh, filling the application, everything. We have gone through the whole detail. The only thing which is left now is how to maintain your PMP certification in subsequent years. As I told you earlier, your PMP certification, if you pass the exam, it stands good for three years. Means you have been given this credential of PMP for three years. After three years, this credential will expire. And during this three year period, you have to complete 60 professional development units. And if you do that, you just can renew it by paying. If you are a member, you can pay $60 and you can renew your membership. I mean, you can renew your PMP certification or if you do not maintain your PMI membership, then you will have to pay 150 rupees for maintaining your PMP certification. I will very strongly recommend that you must keep and maintain your membership also. Although I know this is going to be a bit expensive because then you will have to pay about $139 plus the local chapter fee for, you know, uh, as many years as you keep your membership. And on top of that, after every three years, you will have to pay $60 for your PMP certification. But I must tell you, it is all worth it. You must go for it. There are a lot many advantages of maintaining the PMI certification as well as the PMI membership. I give you an example of another person who did not uh, uh, apply as a member and later on there was a need and he had to take the membership. So uh, that is a necessity. Then uh, talking about the CCR program, the day you get certified, your three year CCR cycle starts the day you pass the exam and it stands good for three years. So if uh, um, today is 15th of September, then three years later on 14th of September would be the last day of your PMP certified status. Therefore, you must pay for your renewal and you must have fulfilled the requirement of 60 PDUs before 14th of September. Uh, this is how you can calculate which um, is the date. And not only that, it will be shown on your PMI membership when you will log in into PMI website. It will show the status of uh, your membership, the status of your credential and also the time left and lot many other details are also there. The PDUs you have so far claimed would also be shown there. So this is a very comprehensive site and you can have all these details available to you. Uh, as we discussed earlier, uh, three credential, uh, three uh, consecutive years of your membership, of your uh, PMP certification, uh, you keep gathering these PDUs and this could be you attend a seminar or a lecture for two hours, you can claim two PDUs, but normally you try to achieve these PDUs from some recognized source. Like if you are in Islamabad and you are a member of PMI Islamabad chapter, PMI Islamabad chapter holds monthly meetings. And those monthly meetings, if you attend every time, you will get two PDUs. So you can have 24 PDUs 
every year. And how much do you require? On average, you require 20 PDUs. So you can miss out two events and still you have got your 20 PDUs completed per year and it will end up into 60 PDUs and you can always have your PDUs completed and applied for, uh, uh, you can apply for the renewal of the certification. Uh, there is a yet another way of doing it and that is even more interesting that is uh, you must go and see the site projectmanagement.com projectmanagement.com project management is one word projectmanagement.com now this is a website which was previously known as gant head g a n w t h e a d dot com ganthead.com it is bought by pmi because this was a very rich site it had a lot of material and activity about project management so pmi bought that site and renamed it as projectmanagement.com the person who was managing that website is still the ceo of projectmanagement.com his name is dave garrett and he is running the whole show. The interesting part is that uh, anybody can access that website, but the membership, yearly membership of that website is again around 130 or $140. But for all PMI members, this website is completely free. Now, this is uh, not just uh, a good news. It is much more than that because when you will visit projectmanagement.com you will find it is exclusively a project management site which is full of material and things you will enjoy first of all uh, they are providing webinars there online and offline webinars like you know we are having this training on on audio or video uh, similarly they have got hundreds and thousands of recorded sessions of one hour each from the experts word over and when when those events are happening live you can also attend them but even if you can't you are not able to attend a live session you can always take it offline so anytime you can log into that website and pick on any one of the topics of your interest and you can attend that one hour session and at the end of the day you will be granted you would be given one PDU. So you can attend two, three, four, five sessions per day and you know you can keep adding to your PDU database and you can have all your certificate certification renewed automatically. You see whenever you you log in the projectmanagement.com as a PMI member it is automatically linked to your PMI account. So whatever activity you do there, you listen to a lecture, automatically one hour would be, one PDU will be added to your profile. And that's how you will be able to complete uh, your 60 hours easily. So I have told you two absolutely free ways of gaining PDUs. Otherwise, you can go and attend any training from anywhere. Like, you know, we do conduct advanced trainings and uh, you, have, you, can, you have to pay for that and you can attend that. Uh, I have so many people coming to me and uh, naturally they do not care much about uh, you know renewing their membership and gaining these PDUs and when the membership is in suspension mode then they are running from pillar to post and that is the time they are ready to spend any amount of money. So they then take expensive courses and ultimately they complete this requirement of having 60 PDUs. So if you do not do it within uh, the, the prescribed three years, um, you will be suspended as a PMP. You will not be allowed to write PMP with your name and this will happen for one complete year. But during this year, you will be allowed to complete your remaining PDUs and if you can complete them, PMI uh, will give your status of PMP back to you. But you have to make the payment of 60 PDUs if you are a member and 150 uh, for $150 if you are not a member. 
I have known of a case <coughs> who had completed all the 60 PDUs uh, in suspension period, but he his payment did not get through, and this one year period was complete was completed, and because he did not pay, his member his P PMP status was completely uh, you know uh, finished. He he was not allowed to maintain his PMP any further. So he was then considering to reapply for PMP exam. So this is what this all is. So whenever in the suspension period you renew your membership, it will not start from that day onwards. It will start from the day it was suspended. So the three year, three year cycle is continuous. Three year and then three year and then three year, no matter the suspension period. Suspension period does not give you any extra advantage at all. Okay. There are different certifications I have talked about, uh, like, like you know, program management professional, portfolio management professional, and so on and so forth. Uh, they all have uh, slightly different requirements. Uh, there are uh, four certifications: program, project management professional (PMP), program management professional (PGMP), portfolio management professional (PFMP), and professional in business and an analysis that is called pmi dash pba these are the four certifications for which each one of them you have to gain 60 pdus remaining uh, three uh, certifications uh, scheduling professional risk ma management professional and agile certified professional you need to have uh, to gain 30 pdus in, in three years and CAPM, as I, I told you yesterday, it cannot be renewed. CAPM stands good for five years and then it cannot be renewed. If you need to do it again, then you will have to appear in the exam again. But as I said yesterday, uh, why should anybody be doing CAPM again if he has the relevant experience to go for PMP? So generally people only take CAPM certification once and after that, after five years, they go and apply for PMP certification and ultimately they become a PMP. But anyways, this is not the end of the world. There are other certifications, PGMP and portfolio and all that. Those of you who are very senior, who have got an experience of uh, uh, say eight years or more, they can go for program management. Those who have got experience of more than 12 years, they can go for portfolio management. Uh, those who, who want to specialize in scheduling or risk or agile or business analysis, they can go for the relevant certifications. <clears throat> now, uh, another thing, uh, what if you gain more than the required PDUs in the three year cycle? What if you had to have only 60 PDUs, but you gained 70? In that case, your additional PDUs can be carried forward to the next three year cycle but there is a limitation limitation is that the excess pdus can only be taken to the next cycle if they are of a maximum quantity like for pmp pgmp portfolio and business analysis only 20 PDUs can be carried forward. So you should not gain more than 80 PDUs in one three year cycle. Because 60 will be counted towards that cycle and 20 can be taken uh, to the next cycle. Not more than that. And the second condition is those 20 PDUs you, you want to carry forward to the next cycle must have been gained in the last year of the three year cycle. I have to understand that. So if you have, you can't do that, that you uh, gain all the 80 PDUs in the very first year of your certification cycle and then you do nothing. In that case, your excess PDUs will get wasted. Those excess PDUs you want to carry forward must have been gained in the last year 
of your cycle. So that is, these are a few things which you had to take care of. Uh, the same rule apply to PGMP and portfolio and PBA, but for SP, RMP and ACP, scheduling, risk management and agile, uh, the carry forward is only 10 PDUs. And moreover, these three areas, you have to gain the PDUs in the specific area of specialization. The 30 PDUs you gain for scheduling professional, that must be in specialized area of project scheduling. For risk, it should be from risk. For agile, it should be from agile. But as far as PMP, PGMP and portfolio uh, is concerned, uh, that uh, could have the common experience. Another interesting f f fact is that if you hold more than one certifications, then some of the certifications are married together. Like PMP, PGMP and portfolio management professional, they, uh, you may get two PDUs from somewhere and they may count towards all three of them. It is not a necessity, but sometimes uh, they, uh, uh, they count towards all three. You, you gain two and count two, two towards PMP, two towards PGMP and two towards portfolio management. So this is very much possible. But you see, if, uh, if you want to be clear about this, you can go to um, the projectmanagement.com and see under every webinar, it is clearly written how many PDUs will it give you and uh, in what for what certification that will apply. So if you hold that certification, you will get that PDU. So naturally all the lectures there, all the webinars there are of one hour duration. Therefore, the PDUs given there are one or less than one. It may be 0.25 PDUs. It may be 0.5 PDUs. So you keep, you know, gathering those and this way you can have your 60 PDUs completed. Okay, the PDUs you gain, it is not only from uh, attending seminars or uh, trainings or whatever. There are many ways of gaining these PDUs. As you understand for PMP, you need to gain 60 PDUs in three years. They must be uh, e from either of the two, two categories. One is the educational category and the other is the giving back to the society, giving back to the profession category. Education category is the most heaviest of all and that is you gain more knowledge. You attend webinars, seminars, trainings or whatever. So whatever PDUs you get, they will be counted towards your PMP and there is no limit. You can have all the 60 PDUs gained through the education. But if uh, you are teaching, if you are doing some activity which, uh, you know, which is contributing towards the profession, if I am teaching, I am contributing towards the profession. If I am writing a book or an article or a paper, I am contributing towards the profession. So all those activities will also gain you some PDUs. I will talk about that a little in the later slide. But yes, you can get some PDUs for giving back category also. Uh, this is the CCR program, the new CCR program. CCR stands for Continuing Certification Requirements. And in this, uh, there has been little changes from the previous one. That's why I did not stay on the last slide because that last slide was depicting the old model. But this is the new model which we will be talking about. Uh, the overall framework of CCR program remains the same. There is not much of change. You will continue to earn PDUs in the categories of education and giving back. How PDUs in those categories are classified is now changed a bit. But naturally you are not much bothered about it because you did not know the earlier method. So I will be telling you the new method of uh, you know calculating your PDUs. 60% uh, of PDUs as compared to 15% earlier are now required in this category to place more emphasis on developing employer demanded skills. So uh, out of the 60 PDUs, at least 60% PDUs should be gained through education. By attending some training or seminar or webinar, 
you must gain at least 60% from that. If you do not have minimum 60% PDUs from education, none of your other PDUs will be counted and your PDUs will not get completed. Education PDUs are aligned with the new PMI talent triangle we'll be just talking about. Minimum number of PDUs must be earned in the technical project management, leadership, and strategic and business management categories. Now what they have done is they have created a PMI talent triangle. And the vertices of these, this triangle, one vertice is technical project management. The other is leadership. And the third one is strategic and business management. They have created a balance between these three things. And you have to gain PDUs in each one of these categories. There is a minimum requirement you have to fulfill. If you don't, even then your PDUs will not be counted and your renewal will not take place. It is not that difficult. I'll, I'll make it very clear to you. Maximum number of total PDUs to be earned in this category, in the giving back category, has now decreased. I mean, naturally, it is now uh, just 40%. Activities remain the same. Whatever you do in giving back category, you can volunteer uh, in any project management venture. Volunteer. Volunteer means you do not get paid for doing that job. If you voluntarily work on any project management assignment, then you will. Uh, it can be counted towards volunteering. Like you see, we have a PMI chapter in Islamabad, and there are certain office holders who are voluntarily working as the board of directors in the PMI Islamabad chapter or there are other volunteers who are working on various committees again free of cost so these people get some PDUs for their services but they don't get paid if you create knowledge you teach you write some you design a course you write a book you write an article um, or something like that that is counted towards creating knowledge so that uh, you will get some PDUs for that as well or if you are working as a professional in the field if you are an engineer or you are a project manager and you are all the time working on projects you will get some PDUs out of that experience as well the total number of PDUs to be earned in working as a profession has decreased from 15 to 8 uh, you don't have to concern yourself with 15. Now you cannot gain more than 8 PDUs. You cannot claim more than 8 PDUs in the experience category. So there are limitations and keeping those limitations in mind, we will talk about how we can gain that. This is the talent triangle. Uh, if you can see that. Okay, so one of the vertices is technical project management, other is leadership, and the third one is strategic and business management. This is called PMI talent triangle, and this has recently been introduced just a year or so back. They have introduced this, and now all um, all the renewals are uh, happening according to that. What does this mean for you? Greater competitive advantage. Previously, people were only preparing for uh, being good project managers, but uh, uh, they might have grown their technical skills, but they may have been lacking the leadership skills or the strategic and business acumen. So now there has to be a balance between the, these these three things. So you will get with all, achieving all these skills, you will gain the greater competitive advantage. You will be more credible and more direction for your career development will be open to, to will be open and therefore you will be a better project manager ultimately. So in technical project management skills, um, you have to demonstrate the knowledge, skills, behaviors related to specific domains of project program and portfolio. We will talk about this. Uh, you are studying project management, but you must know and understand 
what the program and portfolio management is and how it relates to the project management and to the whole organizational scenario. So uh, all the knowledge which deals with all the knowledge and expertise which deals with these three domains is known as the technical project management. Leadership contains all the soft skills all the knowledge and skills and behaviors specific to the leadership oriented cross cutting skills that help an organization achieve its business goals. So that could be, you know, um, communications, conflict management, negotiations, and a lot many other things which you experience in your daily life. Third but not the least is the business and strategy. So this category is the knowledge of of and expertise in the industry or organization that enhances performance and better delivers business outcomes. As a project manager, you will learn that whatever you do must be for the benefit of the organization, must be contributing something to the organization, must be aligned with the organizational objectives. Therefore, you need to understand the business and the strategy of the organization as if you can judge that you are whatever you are doing is contributing positively towards that. If not, then probably you are not fulfilling this specific criteria and you will lose marks in that. So to be um, in more detail, you can see the next slide, which is <clears throat> showing these three vertices. The strategic and business management, what should it include? There's a lot of a long list of uh, topics which is written there, you know, strategic management and realization, business acumen, business models and structures, competitive analysis, customer relationship and satisfaction, industry knowledge and standards, legal and regulatory compliance, market awareness and conditions, operational functions like finance and marketing, strategic planning analysis and alignment, all this comes under strategic and business management. And this is business oriented skills applies to all certifications. It is not only for PMP. This applies to all certifications. <clears throat> Similarly, if we look at technical, this is the domain expertise, which is certification specific. Strategy was not certification specific. This is certification specific. So if you are doing agile certification, the agile practices will, you know, uh, add value to you data gathering and modeling, earned value management, governance of projects, programs, or portfolios, life cycle management of project programs or portfolios, or even the product, performance management of the project programs and portfolios, whichever concerns you, requirements management and traceability, risk management, scheduling management, scope management, time, cost, budget, all, all of these things are all are technical topics and they will give you marks in the technical category. What is included in leadership? Competency in guiding and motivating applies to all certifications. This is also applied to all certifications. Uh, brainstorming skills, coaching and mentoring, conflict management, emotional intelligence, influencing, interpersonal skills, listening, negotiation, problem solving, team building, so you see, you have to get mature in all of these three vertices and all of these skills you have to gain. So you can attend any training and you can claim PDUs for that. But PMI has got some registered education providers and they, their courses and their trainings have been certified by PMI. So that is easier to get training from them. But it does not mean that you do not get uh, this knowledge or this training from anywhere else. You see, if you are um, after you are doing your PMP, if you uh, take an admission in one of the universities and study any project management subject or any of these topics, you can claim uh, that out of uh, that university course. Like you see, uh, I told yesterday uh, for those who have done MSPM, how can they claim? Abid and his ones up. You can claim uh, if you are a PMP, how many PDUs can you claim? But the question is, after doing the PMP, if you join a course, because you have already done MSPM, then it does not apply to you. 
yes that will apply towards the contact hours the 35 contact hours you had to show to appear in the pmp exam but after that if you do some certification course if you do some uh, training if you do some university course then a certain number of um, uh, pdus will be gained through that as well <clears throat> so moving on um, we are more concerned about this these are the 60 pdus shown in front of you the, uh, and you know uh, this formula applies to pmp pgmp portfolio management professional and pba pmi pba is professional in business analysis so there are 60 pdus shown here these 60 dots are there which you have to gain three years and some of them can be you know uh, achieved through education and some of them could be achieved through giving back how many of them can be achieved by education if you don't do any giving back activity and you gain all the 60 pdus in the education category that is all right that will be counted giving back is not a must giving back is an option education is a must but there must be a minimum number of pdus you have to gain in the education category if you don't don't gain that many pdus in education then you do not fulfill the requirement remaining pdus you can gain from giving back category let's have a look at it out of the education category in the three vertices of the talent triangle you need to gain eight pdus in each category eight pdus in each category so that means that you you will definitely have to have eight pdus in technical eight in leadership and eight in strategic and business management that comes out to be 24 pdus but this is not the minimum requirement you have to have at least 35 pdus in education so 34 uh, uh, you have to gain yet another 11 pdus to make it 35 those 11 pdus could be received from any one of the uh, 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 talent triangle vertices it could be from technical or leadership or whatever or a mix of that but the minimum requirement for those is eight each making 24 and then further gain another 11 PDUs that will fulfill your education requirement. But as I said earlier, you can have all the 60 PDUs in education. That is also okay. But you can't have less than 35 PDUs in total in education or less than eight PDUs in any one of the three vertices that will disqualify. Coming over to the giving back, now after deducting 35 from here in the edu from education, we are left with 25 PDUs. So 25 PDUs are the maximum number of PDUs you can ever get in giving back category. And if you uh, out of the 25, if you take out eight PDUs, which are which, are, which is the maximum number of PDUs you could claim against your experience during of working as a professional during these three years, which is only eight, then 25 minus eight is 17. 17 PDUs you can claim uh, from volunteering or creating knowledge are a mix of that. So this is the most detailed way of explaining how you gain your videos and from where you gain your videos, uh, sorry, PDUs. <clears throat> you can uh, keep this slide um, for reference purposes and once you have to have these PDUs, then you can refer back to this or you can consult the PMI website and that this detail might be available there as well. So uh, this is for the PMP, PGMP, uh, for PFMP and PBA uh, for those uh, who are appearing for scheduling professional risk management professional or ACP 
they have to have 30 PDUs and similarly they, their distribution is also similarly like that but it is everything is halved. They have to have four PDUs in each category. They have to have six additional PDUs in either one of those uh, are mix of those three vertices. They are left with uh, 12 PDUs out of which four can be counted towards their working as a professional and eight to work, can be claimed in, uh, on either volunteering or creating knowledge are put together they can be distributed in these two categories so there are 12 PDUs in this category of giving back and the minimum requirement of education is 18 but this slide only relates to three certifications scheduling professional risk management professional and agile certified professional if you are going for PMP ignore this one go back to this slide which shows 60 PDUs and the distribution of those sorry the 60 PDUs and the distribution of those 60 PDUs so this is uh, what it is um, I don't think you uh, need to know any any further about uh, these uh, categories but uh, uh, yes the old system was these categories were named like that category A was supposed to be um, the registered education providers if they tr provide any training that would be considered category A training if you get any training from any university or any non REP organization that would be counted towards category B and there was a possibility of uh, you know self direct do some self directed learning you taught yourself you read some books or instruction manuals or you have seen some videos and CD-ROMs or whatever or podcasts and you have learned yourself so you can claim PDUs from that category as well general principle is one hour of commitment is equal to one PDU in the category of giving back how do you create new knowledge by authoring or co-authoring a project management textbook or a peer-reviewed article or a non-peer reviewed article or writing an article for PMI knowledge shelf or article for relevant electronic newsletters or article for an official organization professional or company blog presenting in a, in a webinar like you know in projectmanagement.com you can present as a, web, a webinar speaker um, um, I have just spoken on 7th of March on one of the topics and my webinar is also available there and I have been uh, conducting these webinars for the last few years you can also present as a uh, on a podcast I hope you understand what is a podcast uh, then you could you could create a course or develop a course like you know uh, the course I am teaching you it was developed by someone so whomsoever develops the course get some PDUs if you are uh, serving as a speaker or as instructor at any place in course or a presentation you get some PDUs serving as a moderator of a discussion you know, project management related discussion you uh, get some PDUs and then you also sometimes act as a subject matter expert in a panel discussion that also gives you some PDUs volunteer services as I said volunteering with PMI International in their global congresses in their advisory boards in writing their standards or you could even volunteer with the local chapter of PMI or even if you are volunteering for some other cause related to project management that also can be counted towards the volunteer services working as a profession as I told you the number is now only eight PDUs can be claimed if you have continuously been working for three years as a professional you can claim not more than eight PDUs so uh, that's all about the PDUs uh, if you have any questions about it you can ask those questions I am unmuting you Uh, when you will you know go through these slides on your own you will be able to better understand them 
because uh, right now I, I I was the only one speaking, and maybe you know some of you were not even attentive, uh, some were and some were not. So therefore, uh, this gap can be bridged after you have seen those slides in detail and in your own time. Uh, but this information uh, is important only when you become a BMP. Uh, sir, these slides which you just uh, taught us, these things, these are, uh, these will get. Uh, you'll uh, upload them sir, afterwards. They are, uh, they are all uploaded. They are all available. If you can look in the materials, this is the module zero zero. I have again uploaded it, and if you face any problem, I can you know again put it right. Fine. Okay, any other questions? Right. If you do not have any other questions, then be ready. We are going to give you a pre-assessment exam. I want to see uh, your project management knowledge, whatever it is. It is not a matter of passing or failing or anything. I just want to gauge how much do you know about project management and is it aligned or is it in line with what the project PMB OK says. So just be prepared and I will just launch the test as soon as you, you are OK. Take some time. Relax, have a glass of water and then we can start the test. Sir, waiting is more dangerous. I think we can start. So, everybody agrees that we should start? Okay, I'm doing it for the first time. I don't know. Yes, sir. I have never taken a test on online like this. But I am launching the test and you would, you would just start off with it. Here it goes. Time has started. Are you able to access it? No, sir. Go in polls and tests. There would be... Yes, we got it, sir. Polls and tests. And click on the test. Is there a problem? I haven't it here. Okay, these are 20 questions. You can take up to 25 minutes and you can do this. Uh, but, but let me tell you, uh, uh, do let me know if you face any problem in access, accessing this test. Uh, I, I haven't uh, got any Ji? Who was speaking? Abed is speaking, Abed. sir. I haven't uh, got any answers. Okay. Can you see the polls and tests uh, heading in the in the window? You see, like now you sir, have the, the RDO, except uh, there would be polls and yes, tests. Yes, I. Yeah, uh, sir, I can see the right hand, raised hand, and uh, view in window. No, no, no. Button. Open the. Uh, it is collapsed uh, mode. You just see a small. Uh, uh, the, you can't see the whole window. The so large. I see the blank window. Blank. blank window. Yes. Uh, Ghazi, do you get it? Are you accessing the test? Uh, not yet. Not yet? 
Correct land? No. Yes, sir. I can exist. Okay. Uh, you can guide uh, uh, others how to access it. Rizwan sir? Sir, uh, I'm accessing it. Uh, the, the, just I think it's the uh, problem of the net because it took some time. The same okay. blanket, uh, the okay. blank, it opened, sir. Okay. So, uh, three people have accessed it and two people are unable to access it. Um, Abid and Ghazi, please do let me know when, when you, you know, uh, you are uh, able okay. to access it. Waiting for this. So, all, all others can keep doing the test. Uh, Ghazi, probably you are having problems with your uh, network connection. Yes, sir, I found it. Thank you. Kazi, what is the status? Going on, sir. Uh, you, you got it? Got yes, sir. Okay, wonderful. Everybody has got the test, and now you can you, you can start attempting it, and I'll check after twenty five minutes.
Your time is almost over, so uh, I think only one person is is left. Please hurry up. Okay, time is over. Please close down your test. Who is left? Okay, I am I am finishing. Uh, I'll be finishing the test now.
ओके हंड्रेड परसेंट कंप्लीट ओके दैट्स गुड सो लेट अस रिव्यू can you see the screen right yes sir okay yes, okay so this is uh, uh, the exam and answers first question was on this 17 percent people answered it correctly. Uh, who did not answer balanced matrix? Me sir. Okay. And me and answer sir. Rest. Right. So probably only one person answered it correctly. Whose answer was balanced matrix? Uh, I did so sir. Okay, uh, right. So, Gadi, what was your reason to uh, say it balanced matrix? So, the uh, organizations vary from uh, being functional to projectized. And okay. Matrix is an organization which is uh, balanced in between. So, this was a balanced organization, as I understood it. Right. You see, uh, this organization has seven project managers, and all of them are managing separate projects. Project teams are centrally controlled by a single administrator. So this is not a project, a purely projectized organization. This is being administered by a function. And do not report directly to the respective project managers. People are not reporting to the project managers. So this further ensures that this is not um, a projectized structure. Depending on the nature of their projects, some project managers also control budget, but not all. In projectized structures you will learn that complete control is in the hand of project manager so this is not functional this is not weak matrix this is kind of a balanced matrix in which some powers are shared are with the functional manager and some powers are with the project manager a weak matrix would be where more powers are with the function manager and less powers are with the project manager so this is a balanced matrix in which you have created some kind of balance second question uh, Almost everybody was right except probably one person. 83 percent answered it correctly. You have been hired as a quality assurance manager at Six Sigma Incorporated. You have been assigned the responsibility of quality assurance of processes and their continuous improvement. How do you classify your new assignment? Now you see, it is not a project. Anybody who said it is a project. Right. It is not a project because this is an operational work. Quality is, yes, we do quality in project management also, but this assignment is not a project assignment at all. This is a regular operational work of that person. Uh, as an independent task, because it is not related with operational work, this is also wrong because this is operational work. And it can be classified, so D is also wrong. So not as a project because it is repetitive in nature that that was the correct answer third question uh okay the project has successfully completed and product delivered to client after the maintenance 